What's up? It's Wills, back with more Miata mods. We're finally at the part of the build that I'm most excited about is putting back my turbo kit. So originally I took apart my turbo kit because there was a huge oil leak at the turbo. Found it was coming from the turbo line, so figured I might as well take it apart, replace all the parts that needed to be replaced, and get this thing running again. So first up, I got my manifold and my downpipe ceramic coated. Here's some pictures of it before. As you can see, they were like super rusty and beat up. Now they're looking pretty much brand new. Next up, I had to replace the turbo to the intercooler pipe. It had a big old rip. You can see here on the intercooler pipe, there's a big old rip in it. It didn't go all the way through, but figured I might as well replace it. So here's the brand new hose from Flying Miata. Also got a new filter. I had to get a new blow valve because my old blow valve had a huge crack in it, as you can see here. So I replaced it with this new TurboSmart blow valve. This unit is made specifically for the Flying Miata kit, really small and compact. It's also able to pivot the vacuum line position so I can point it right where I need it. And it also comes with the new filter. We also got new hardware for the turbo. Got some Stage 8 locking washers for the turbo to the manifold. Got new studs and hardware for the downpipe. We also got new hose clamps from Vibrant, new oil feed and return lines. And this is actually the main reason I started tearing apart the turbo kit because the oil, because the oil return line was leaking really bad. So that's why I started this whole tear down in the first place. And then lastly, when I bought the car, it didn't have any coolant lines hooked up to the turbo, so I figured I'd add those while I'm in here. Alright, so that's an overview of all the stuff I'm replacing. Let's go ahead and get started by getting the turbo, the manifold, and the downpipe, and all the lines together. Let's go ahead and get started. Alright, so first up, let's go ahead and get this Stage 8 locking hardware mounted onto the turbo manifold. So with this Stage 8 locking hardware, this will keep the turbo on to the manifold and keep it from backing out. So let's go ahead and get it on. Here's what comes with the Stage 8 locking hardware. You have four studs, four bolts for these clips and these locking tabs. Alright, next up, we're going to go ahead and double nut each stud, like so. I'm going to go ahead and tighten them together and get the stud all the way bottomed out. And next up, we're going to go ahead and torque it down to 24 foot pounds. And after we're done with that, we're going to go ahead and take off the nuts. First up, we're gonna go ahead and replace this oil feed line on the turbo with the new one. And the size for it is a 5 8 And then clean it out real quick. All right, so here's the new fitting that we got. So this is a flare fitting, so you just want to make sure to get it nice and snug. Flying Miata recommends about 11 foot pounds, but essentially you just want to get it nice and snug. All right, next up, let's go ahead and get on the wastegate actuator. Next up, we're going to get on this little clip that will hold the wastegate actuator arm in place. All right, now that we got these torqued down, go ahead and get the turbo onto the manifold. Pretty much how you want it is EGR pipe is facing towards the back and you want the turbo outlet facing towards the back as well. We got our hardware from our Stage 8 locking hardware. those on snugged in by hand all right next you want to just snug up all the bolts holding the turbo onto the manifold we're gonna go for about 24 foot pounds for most of these bolts you won't be able to get a torque wrench in there so you're gonna have to just use a wrench and get it real nice and snug
All right, next up, let's go ahead and get these locking tabs in. Pretty much what you wanna do with these is you wanna have them pointing counterclockwise. All right, so here's the stage eight locking hardware installed. Essentially it keeps it in place by not allowing the the bolts to move beyond this little wiggle so essentially this keeps the bolts from backing out without having to use any loctite and if you need to take them off just pop the clips out take off these tabs and the bolts will come off just like regular bolts all right next up we're going to go ahead and get these studs in for the turbo outlet the side that's shorter it's going to go into the turbo and the long side is going to be the side that's going out And just like the other studs, we're gonna go ahead and double nut it. All right, next up, we're gonna get the downpipe on. Fly Miata recommends not running a gasket between the turbo and the downpipe. But when I got the downpipe powder coated, they powder coated the mating surface where it could cause a leak. So I'm gonna be running a gasket anyways. And for the hardware, I'm gonna be running these Nordlock washers. They should keep the nuts from backing off once they're installed. So there's no way to really fit a socket around most of these. So for this one and this one, so you're just gonna have to tighten it down by hand using a wrench, it's a 13 millimeter. And we're going for about 16 foot pounds. All right, now we're going to get the studs into the downpipe. These are the same studs that are used for the turbo outlet and the same nuts and washers as well. All right, let's go ahead and get the oil drain on first up. I'm gonna get this gasket and this adapter on. I'm gonna put a little bit of a high temp RTV on there just to give us a little insurance for the oil drain. Then we're looking for about 16 foot pounds. Now we're gonna get this hose barb on for the oil drain. We're gonna be using some of this Permatex thread sealer. And then it's going to be 11 sixteenths. This is a flare fitting. You want to just get it hand tight. And then after that, you want to give it about a turn and a half and it should be good. Let's go ahead and get our oil drain hose on. Then we're going to take one of our constant tension hose clamps, slip that over, and the hose clamp is going to be an 8 millimeter. Next, we're going to go ahead and get this heat sleeve on. We're going to slip it over the clamp. All right, next up, we're going to go ahead and get on the water lines. Pretty much for this heat sleeve, we're going to have to chop it in half. And for the water line hoses, they recommend a 30 inch and a 36 inch length of hose. So let's go ahead and get these cut. All right, so next up, we're gonna go ahead and feed this heat sleeve over the lines. Next up, let's go ahead and get these pinch clamps on. Next up, let's go ahead and get the banjo bolts on. All right, next up, we're gonna get this banjo adapter on. Get the washer on. Get into the banjo fitting. And then another washer. And the shorter side hose is gonna be the one that's going on the bottom of the turbo, which is the outboard. And to tighten up this fitting, it's gonna be a 19 millimeter. 
And pretty much we're just looking for snug. Don't need to go to a certain torque spec. So once it's snug, should be good to go. All right, now that we got the turbo together, let's go ahead and go out to the car and we're gonna get the oil feed line on. All right, let's start off with getting off this old rusty, crusty oil feed line and replacing it with a new one. Now we're gonna get our new fitting with the copper washer. And then we're looking to just get it snug. All right, next up, we're gonna get on the adapter. Before we do that, we're gonna get just a bit of oil on the fitting. So this is a flare fitting, so you wanna get it just hand tight, and then we're gonna snug it up with a wrench. And then you wanna kind of point facing slightly forward and up at about a 45 degree angle. And then once it's snug, we just give it like a quarter turn. Now let's go ahead and get the line on, get a little bit of oil on the male side. And once again, we're just looking to get it snug. And once it's snug, give it like another quarter turn or so. All right, now that the oil feed is in, one last thing before we put the turbo on the motor is we have to loosen the motor mounts so we can lift up the engine just a little bit so we can squeeze the turbo into the space. All right, so I got the motor mounts loose. Next up, let's go ahead and get on the exhaust manifold gasket. So here's where you want to jack up the engine from. I jacked it up right where the tranny meets the back of the engine. Don't jack it up on the oil pan or else you're probably going to have a bad time. All right, now that the engine's jacked up, get this big old thing up in there. To make some more room, we're gonna get, take the dipstick out. There's a 10 mil holding it on right here. And then it just pops right. And for the exhaust studs, I also got these North Lock washers and these locking nuts. All right, next up, we're gonna go ahead and tighten down the manifold to the head. They're 14 millimeter bolts. There's no way to really get any sockets in there or a torque wrench. So I'm just gonna use this 14 millimeter wrench and the short stubby one for the ones on the bottom. And when you're tightening them down, you wanna start from the middle and work your way out. All right, next up, let's go ahead and put the water line back on. And then we're gonna go ahead and get our dipstick back in. All right, next up, let's go ahead and get the water lines connected. So this is where we're gonna feed the water inlet and the water outlet's gonna go right there by the water pump. All right, so the lines are a bit longer than I'd like for my setup. So I'm gonna go out ahead and have to snip them a little bit. Mark it right about there. All 
All right, next up, let's go ahead and get the oil feed connected. Get a little bit of oil on the fitting before you put it on. Then we're just gonna get a little bit of oil into the female side. We're gonna tighten it up with the 916 wrench. Wanna get it pretty much just about snug. We're gonna get some oil on the male side of this fitting. Take off this cap for the line. Get a little oil up in there too. All right, then we just tighten this down. The line is also a 916. All right, and then I got this tube to protect the oil feed line from the water line, kind of rubbing up against each other. So I wanna make sure they don't tear each other apart. All right, so got the water lines in, got the oil feed in. Next up, let's do the oil drain. I went ahead and put on my old uh, turbo to intercooler pipe just to see where things will fit. Looks like I need to cut the drain tube about maybe two inches or so. All right, here's the fitting that my car came with. And here's the new one that's from Fly Miata. The diameter is a lot thicker than this one. So hopefully this should definitely help it flow a lot better. So let's go ahead and get the new one on the car. And then luckily for me, my car already came turbo. So my oil pan is already tapped for the fitting. All right, so I got the new fitting on and the line. As you can see, there's a definitely a kink right here. Yeah, for now, I'm just gonna take off probably about two inches or so. See how the fitment of the line goes. Fits pretty good now, no kinks or anything. Line just runs straight down from the turbo into the pan. Next up, let's go ahead and get on the intercooler. All right, so before we get the intercooler installed, let's go ahead and clean it out. I'm gonna be using some 99% alcohol. I'm gonna get it in there and just swish it around and then rinse it out with water. Other ways you can do it, probably using gasoline, denatured alcohol, maybe acetone. I've read online some people using 50-50% mix of degreaser and water. I don't really like that idea just because the degreaser could cause some etching in the aluminum and it's probably better to just use something that's like solvent-based. All right, so I rinsed it out a few times and I put the rest of it in there. I'm just gonna let it soak in there, come back and then rinse it out again. All right, now I'm just gonna rinse it out with some distilled water. And for the intercooler clamps, I'm going to be using these vibrant heat clamps. I figured I'd replace the old clamps on here. Some of them were not the right size. Some of them kind of are just these cheap, crappy clamps. All right, so let's go out to the car and get this stuff on. All right, next up, let's go ahead and get on this new blow valve. As you can see, this old blow valve has a big old crack in it, and you can see it cracked all the way to the inside. This could definitely be an issue where I could see a boost leak, and this unit is just made out of plastic, so over time, I think heat cycles could definitely make this worse. So we got this new Turbo Smart unit from Fly Miata. It's all billet aluminum with the new filter. Another nice thing about this is I can pivot this 
so I can get it right where I want it versus the old one where it pretty much just has only one position. Let's get this thing on. All right, next up, we're gonna take this brass T. We're gonna tap into this port for vacuum. So we're gonna go and run it in between here and the fuel pressure regulator. And this is where we're gonna get our boost signal. Originally, the car had the boost gauge running from here, but after reading Flying Miata's instructions, probably better to pull the vacuum from here. So I went and capped that off. Let's go ahead and run it the correct way. So here's the new vacuum lines to run. Definitely clean up this area a bit. Next up, we gotta run a new vacuum line from the T through the firewall. All right, so that's the T that we're connecting into. Runs from here down into one of the ports, and from here to here. So you can see the installation surrounding the O2 wire. It's gotten a little bit melted. I'm gonna go ahead and use some hose. I'm gonna cut it in half. I'm gonna use that to hopefully protect this thing a little bit better from all the heat. So let's get this hose on and then we can get the downpipe on. All right, before we go ahead and put on the rest of the downpipe, I went ahead and took off this test pipe. And as you can see, there was definitely an exhaust leak here coming from the top and the bottom of this gasket. You can also see it here. Probably the gasket didn't fully seal or it wasn't fully lined up when everything was tightened down. See the other side too also had a leak. You can also see that this hardware is definitely beat up and super rusty. This bolt is actually a different size than this one and this one which was on the other side is also a different size so i went ahead and got new gaskets new hardware hopefully these will prevent the exhaust leaks that i'm seeing go ahead and seal up the exhaust all right so i got the test pipe in and the fitment isn't very great it's not quite lining up and also the downpipe is a two and a half inch and my exhaust is a two and a half inch whereas this test pipe is a two inch so this is a huge restriction on the exhaust system so i've decided that i'm actually not going to run this so here's the new test pipe i ordered it was made by unequal fabrication it's a resonated test pipe so hopefully this should quiet down the car a little bit it's also a two and a half inch so that should definitely help the exhaust system flow better compared to the two inch test pipe that I currently have on the car. And just checking it out, man, these welds are really nice. Ethan at Unequal Fabrication did a great job on this. And I can't wait to see how it sounds once it's on the car. So let's go ahead and get it on. that's the turbo all installed still got to do a few more things before i start up the car again so stay tuned so i hope you enjoyed the video if you did go ahead and give it a like and if you want to keep following the build subscribe hope you all have a great day and catch you in the next one peace